Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Peugeot 607. Suspension of 607 is smooth sofa, providing a high level of comfort when driving on any relatively flat roads. True, for strongly broken directions there is not enough energy intensity and the overhands are too long. The main disadvantages of the front suspension are a weak subframe and very unsuccessful strut supports with the leaking rusting bearing. In addition, the stabilizer bracket and the front arm bear bushing housing on the 607R1 aluminum piece. The bolts are tightly sour in it, which leads to cracking along the holes of the fasteners. A new set of cover and bracket cost about 80 euros per side, and a used one is a little cheaper. It can be an extremely unpleasant surprise when repairing a suspension. The rest is a typical McPherson strut, inexpensive to maintain. Ball joints are screwed in, and not always successfully unscrewed back. Silent blocks and bearings are changed separately. The safety margin is very good. You can only criticize the relatively soft front levers, which bend with good impacts. In the version with adjustable shock absorbers, the latter are surprisingly cheap in the original version, 120 to 120 euros depending on the version. True, the system is capricious given the very weak wiring to the body level sensors. And on cars with xenon, this is also a problem. The rear suspension is structurally more complicated, but is also maintainable and not even very expensive. Although a rather complex scheme is used here with two load bearing arms and one additional one, in kinematics it's similar to the complex five link arms from Mercedes. Steering with conventional power steering doesn't suffer from any specific problems. The knocks of the sleds are perfectly matched by soundproofing, so they do not bother to the last. The knocks of the hinges in the cabin, on the other hand, are heard well. This could be due to wear or and tear or improper assembly during repairs. The spline connection also knocks sometimes. The life of the rods and tips is too small, especially when using low-profile rubber and in urban use. It is advisable to add more grease to the hinges, this increases their resource. The cars are strictly front-wheel drive and do not have big problems in the mechanical part. And for 607 there are almost no CV joints on sale, and the original drives cost 60,000 rubles apiece. But the CV joint from 407 with similar motors are excellent. Their external dimensions are different, but the installation dimensions are the same. MCP are of two types. On 2.2 gasoline engines, BVA series boxes can be found, but BVM is mainly found in the 5-speed version, of the ML5T, ML5C and the 6-speed ML6. The 5-speed gearbox, which is on the handle on the most 607, has an excellent mechanical part. Shafts, bearings and synchronizers in quiet modes are conditionally eternal, if the oil level is not missed, which happens since the gearbox often leaks. The resource of the bearings of the input shaft and the inclusion forks is 400 or more. Most cars have not even reached such runs. The main problem of the 5 motor is associated with the operation of the gear shifting mechanism, which is expressed in the difficult inclusion of the first, second and reverse gears. The rope slow to zower during a long stay, the wings become loose by a hundred thousand run. In the shifting mechanism itself, the shaft and its sleeve wear out. Officially the system is non-separable, but the craftsman cut the balancer from the shaft and restore the shelf itself. The same operation is needed when installing boxes from older versions of machines where the balancer may be of a different shape. The 6-speed ML6 gearbox, which was installed on powerful versions of diesels and 2.2 gasoline engines, after restyling has a more durable body and moreover is slightly newer, so the breakdowns are the same but so far less often. All 607s have a dual mass flywheel, and it's not very reliable with 150 plus runs the chances of knocks and breakdowns are already quite high. But these manual gearboxes are old, and for them there are ordinary flywheels and clutches. For example, the Luke 62421900 repair kit from old Peugeot 405 and 406 fits perfectly with gasoline engines and junior diesel engines. In cars before the restyling of the automatic transmission, this is a 4-speed setup 4 hp to after restyling, it was replaced by the 6-speed ICNTF 80SC. The 4-speed automatic is very robust and reliable, while still relatively modern. It is electronically controlled and has a forced lock-up torque converter GTL. The construction is practically indestructible, but there are a few Achilles heels. 
First of all, this is a torque converter, which when it's bushing are worn out due to regular overheating and oil leaks from the oil seal vibrates the oil pump bushing and the oil pump itself. On Peugeot things are complicated by the cooling system with a heat exchanger that clogs, corrodes and leaks over time. With gasoline engines, the operating temperature of the oil is stable over 100 degrees, which is very harmful for the pistons of the box and all its wiring. Also with age, the likelihood of failures of the box selector increases. It loses its tightness and the contract oxidizes and wear out, causing a transition to emergency operation. The mechanical part of the structure is very strong. With the clean valve body, the clutches have almost no wear on any run. Breakdowns in the form of a break in the joint between the input shaft and the drum are possible only when forcing diesel engine over 350 nanometer and overdriving the turbine. If we change the oil on time, avoiding contamination of the valve body and wear of the two PWM solenoids, which are responsible for the base pressure and blocking of the gas turbine engine, and at the slightest vibration go to the service to repair the torque converter, then the box will not break and will not fail. On the Mercedes W638, exactly the same box is easily covered for 100,000 km without capital or more. The 6-speed ISIN is in general very reliable and still softer. And breakdowns are more common and it's much more demanding to change the oil. On Peugeot, due to the increased temperature, the main problem is the cracked piston of the C2 package, which leads to shocks when shifting 4, 5, 6 gears. And the box doesn't have enough pressure and to turn it on you either need to twist the motor and turn on the gear manually or you have to fill the box break into slipping and the shock. Modern me mechanics do not tolerate this, it's better to go directly to the service. The problem of modern icing with the backlash of the satellite axis has not bypassed the box. With the rare oil change, the presence of shock loads due to breakdowns of the C2 piston or contamination of the valve body, the box may begin to hum. TF80 is a revised and improved version and therefore more reliable. However, the generality of the design determines the same principles of trouble-free operation, ensuring the purity of the oil and lowering the operating temperature to 80-86 degrees. 607 has beauty under the hood. Covers cover everything unnecessary. Motors are comfortable. There is a lot of space for maintenance. It's a pity the radiators get dirty hair easily and it's difficult to wash them without removing the bumper. There are also problems with the radiator fan. It fails due to motor breakdowns or burnout of resistor, increasing the chances of engine overheating. There are many complaints about the poor performance of the hoses, which literally creep in the hands. Most likely this is due to the use of non-native antifreezes, which corrode the material. There is also a problem with the crankcase ventilation pipes, but there is a different reason, we'll talk about this below. Replacing the fuel pump is a whole problem. It would seem that a window in the body is provided for this operation. Practice, it's easy to remove it, but it's extremely difficult to put it back, usually when an unsuccessful attempt to put the pump back. They break the large plastic nut securing the flask or deform its seal. As a result, the tank becomes leaky, dirt gets into it and the cabin smells of gasoline or diesel fuel. Both engines of the Peugeot 607 are our cold old acquaintances. They are very popular in 2000s in line for 2.2 and V-shaped 6 2.9. All engines are naturally aspirated with distributed injection, rather conservative and relatively reliable. The 2.2 EW12 engine, in addition to the 607, was installed on the 406, 407 models, as well as the couple of 807 and Citroën C8 minivans, exotic for the Russian market. It's directly related to the even more popular 2.0 EW10. The 2.2 EW12 J4 engine in the 3FZ versions, before restyling and after 3FY, is usually strong, you think. The main problems of this line of engines are oil leaks and its gradually progressive consumption, as well as very hard operation of the phase regulator clutch. Leaks are a solvable problem. You just need not to be lazy, periodically completely sort out and clean the crankcase ventilation system, leakage. It clogs up and stops working and the tubes often creep into racks if the oil separator is clogged for a long time. After 200,000 francs, this should be done approximately every 40-50 thousand francs. If you drive on the highway in cold weather, you need to either put the old-fashioned cardboard in the radiator or insulate the VKG. 
otherwise it freezes and the oil can squeeze out of the engine. With each replacement of the timing, which should not be tightened to the factory 120,000, but to carry out every 69,000 runs, you need to properly reseal the engine, replacing all the front cover oil cells and all gaskets, and especially the rings and the gasket of the water oil heat exchanger. Meticulousness almost guarantees the dryness of the engine, even with runs well over 300,000. Oil appetite is just a consequence of problems with wiki G and wear of valve seals. They gradually coke and piston, but it stubbornly doesn't coke, although there are only ones in which the rings are buried. This is an extremely unpleasant scenario, because if there is serious wear of the cylinder, then there will be no wear to sharpen. There are no repair dimensions, you will have to sleeve it. But a set of original pistons from only 200 euros, therefore they are simply no non-original ones. If a strong vibration annoys during warming up, then this is not a bug, but a feature. The supports and the crankshaft speed at idle in this mode are simply not very well selected. Diesel engine sound is usually a consequence of problems with the phase regulator. On older machines the control valve malfunctions and the phase regulator itself begins to knock at the high oil pressure. A new one costs 320-350 euros, which is comparable to the price of a contract motor, so bulkhead is used, the purchase of an entire motor in reserve or revision of an existing one. The latter consists mainly in increasing the rigidity of the plunger spring, which is also responsible for the centering of the phase regulator elements. Installing a stiffer spring solves the problem. The stiffness is selected empirically, and one of the recommendations sounds like cut the spring from the steering rack of Peugeot 405 to 25 mm. Such a spring is twice as stiff as the original. Such a refinement should significantly change the characteristics of the clutch operation, but in practice it's not felt much. In early motors, the mode line heat exchanger has a very expensive O-ring. It's cheaper to replace the heat exchanger with Valio, whose ring costs a penny. Soaking the ring in S-stone or Dimexide also helps, but for a couple of years. Hydraulic lifters with 200 plus mileage and offer clogged and need to be flushed or replaced. And the valves of the hydraulics in the cylinder head are often worn out. A weak and highly pretentious welded steel exhaust manifold and a flimsy intake manifold require a good service culture. The gradation putty also allows to ring, which is treated by welding the cross. Another very common problem is throttle gear wear. Used dampers are inexpensive, but it's safer to change the gears themselves. They are on sale. The plastic tube of the oil intake sometimes cracks. It's highly recommended to change it to a metal one of the old model. The secondary air system, catalyst and EGR are capricious, not arranged in the best way. But the engine management system catches their shutdown at once according to several algorithms. And if there are no firmware options, the owners are forced to install tricks. For example, turning off the oxygen sensors during warming up, putting tricks of the second lambda. The injectors are sensitive to the quality of the fuel and potentially endangered due to the lack of a regular filter and the above mentioned probable leakage of the fuel pump flask. But this is just a small problem. In which case the Bosch nozzles from the ZMZ-406 stand up one to one. The big 2.9 liter V6, which is French round, round up to 3.0, is the ES9. It can be found not only in Peugeot Citroën, but also under the hood of some Renault models. It was developed jointly and is found on 406, 407, Citroën C5, Renault Laguna and more. At 607 before restyling, it carries the ES9J for as index and after ES9 IA. The motor boasts a good resource, interesting sound and at least sufficient traction. The only obvious consumer drawback is gluttony. In the city even a serviceable engine will be available in the region of 18 liters per 100 kilometers. However, there are also many strange technical solutions in it. The main problems are leaks of pipes of the cooling system in the rear of the block, knocking off phase regulators, the same as in the EV12. Leaking phase regulator valves, oil from which flows through the wire over time to the engine control unit, strange and expensive injectors, and for motors up to restyling and pump expensive and rare. Like the EW12, there are problems with the WikiG. Even the working system freezes in the same way in winter, and pipes creep apart due to a clogged oil separator. 
The cylinder head covers also leak strongly. They are plastic here with oil separators. The factory thermostat is very unfortunate. It often wedges its skewed that it's mostly in the open position, but there are also cases when it wedges in the closed position and this is a direct road to overheating. Diesel 607s are quite rare in Russia, but their population is huge in neighboring Belarus, where historically the attitude towards diesels is more positive. As in the line of gasoline engines, there are both inline fours, in two volumes 2.0 and 2.2, and V6 2.7. The most common options is the pre-styling 2.2 DW12 TED4 with one turbine and a diesel particulate filter with a capacity of 136 horsepower. By the way, the initial version of this diesel engine had two turbines, but this option was not installed on the 607, which is good since there were many problems with it. More powerful 2.2 DW12 ATED4 with 158 horsepower, also with one turbine. But DW12 BTED4 170 horsepower again to turbine and it has proportionally more problems with the pressurization system. The main disadvantages of the DW motor line are the pneumatic metering unit that flows oil to the generator. A pneumatic metering device is such a choke mixer with automatic control for cars with a particulate filter. It's needed to regulate the enrichment of the mixture and the temperature to the inlet. The problem can easily load not only to generator failure but also to a fire in the engine compartment. The pneumatic batcher itself malfunctions, limiting the power of the motor. The gears of its damper breaks and oil flows out through the worn out damper axles. A radical solution to the issues is the removal of the particulate filter and the replacement of the dispenser with a simple branch pipe. If the dispenser is removed and the filter is left, it will become impossible to burn it, as a result of which it will quickly clog. Broken wiring in the corrugation is also unpleasant. Short circuits occur here relatively often, although the connector on the fuel pressure sensor suffers even more often. Any opening of the wiring reveals the insulation flying off by pieces, so a long visit to an electrician is highly recommended for an agent motor for a fuel relocation of the motor side and the replacement of connectors. Oil in the intake usually appears due to wear on the turbine and a faulty VCG. And with 250 plus mileage on average, this means always. The problem is about the same as on the EW series of motors, all leaky pipes and clogged oil separators, broken fitting and at the same time freezing of the VCG in winter. Breakage of the temper pulley of the additional equipment belt seems to be a trifle, but 10 years ago they didn't know that this part would become a consumable, so I'll mention it separately. Moreover, sometimes its breakdown is accompanied by a meeting of valves with pistons since a broken special stage belt gets under the timing belt and tears it at the same time, but this is a rare case. Problems with the turbine blowing due to a malfunction of the vacuum system is far from a trifle although most of the owners treat this problem with indifference. Any leak in the vacuum system can backfire with dead turbines, burn out pistons and a rolled up box. By the way, this is a very likely way of killing the eternal automatic transmission setup for HP20 on cars before the restyling mentioned above. And the single turbine engines are equipped with a Carrot GT1549P turbine with a very curious system for changing the geometry of the volute. It has a shaft with kite vanes, coaxially with the cartridge shaft in the hot part, which was slide onto the hot turbine impeller, covering it from the outside and changing the angle of attack of the gases. The drive is simple vacuum and mechanically, this option is much simpler than a typical wing with movable blades. It's a pity that the drive is weak and wedges quite often, providing underblowing or overblowing. Sometimes the vacuum drive is changed to a larger drive, this provides better accuracy, but more problems are due to violations of the vacuum in the system. It's good that the turbine cartridge itself is one of the cheapest available, they ask for less than 50 euros for a Chinese copy. Two turbine diesel engines have a DCGT1240 Z turbine. They are already two cartridges, both they are also relatively cheap, but the design itself is monstrous and the price from 150 euros doesn't look too high. However, there are offers for 2,500 and even 3,000 euros. The variable geometry system here is already a classic type 
with a variable angle of inclination of the plates and the vacuum drive. True, the need for such a complex system is incomprehensible, since during tuning all this splendor is changed for one more turbine and five times cheaper, for example, GTB 2056 and the torque characteristic of the motor doesn't deteriorate at all, but more than 250 forces are removed from this diesel engine. Let us also recall the intake flaps of the swirl system, which live their own life when the drive breaks off. And sometimes even their remnants end up in the cylinders, with understandable consequences in the form of breakdowns of rockets and valves. In general, for a component owner of 200, competent owner of 2.2, they are removed since they do not affect work. Well, such typical diesel troubles as air leaks, a current UCR with the heat exchangers, sticking glow plugs, wear of the injection pump, dirty nozzles are also typical for DW12. Before restyling, engines still have a problem with the resource of the intershaft chain in the timing drive. You read everything correctly, the motor with the belt in the timing drive, the camshafts are connected by a short chain. Of course, you are unlikely to find a car with mileage of about 120,000 and an original timing belt now. But in spare parts, you can find original chains of the first releases and camshafts, and the price will be the same as that of the new original. Check the part codes, the chain must have code 0816.F8 and if the number 6 is in the end, do not take it, this is an old and fake version. Visually, it's a couple of millimeters narrower. The factory codes were not changed for the camshaft, but the old shafts are clearly softer, they often lift up the cams and especially the necks, and the stars on them wore out quickly. PCA also doesn't have the best fuel filters. Installing heated filters and new fitting with better tightness is widely practiced, but it's still too narrow a topic. In general, this is a good diesel engine, just demanding on the quality of fuel and service. Under favorable conditions, it can travel 500, 600 or even a million kilometers without overhaul, since everything is fine with the piston group. But if you neglect preventive repairs, then there are good chances to ditch the engine and at 250,000 and earlier. The six-cylinder diesel 2.7 DT17TED4, also known as UHZ, according to the Peugeot classification, is much more problematic. Its 204 horsepower version places with exactly the same troubles as the more powerful engine options on the Jaguar XF and XJ and other cars on which it was installed. Low oil pressure with age reverberates with early wear of the crankshaft liners, wear of the camshaft beds and overheating of the camshaft themselves, and it usually ends with a broken crankshaft or even a fist of friendship. Reinforced oil pumps and vicious oil 10W50 or 10W60 can reduce the severity of the problem. But in order to avoid it, you need to monitor the oil pressure both in the channel to the crankshaft and the pressure in the cylinder head. The full list of measures includes the mandatory installation of an improved oil pump, replacement of liners with runs of more than 100,000 on low viscosity oils and a stock oil pump, installation of a list one oil pressure gauge, and careful selection of both the oil filter and oil, and no low viscosity oils and drain intervals of 15 plus thousand kilometers, even with the new oil pump and liners, after long journey on 5W4 oils, the pressure can sag almost to a critical one. On this, information about the problems of Peugeot 607 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.